Hey everybody, welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 video and welcome also to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark, thanks very much for watching and let's get started. In this video we're going to focus solely on the controls menu. I'll explain exactly how it works and what everything means. Intuitive and easy to use it's not, but if you take the time to get to grips with it, you'll find it a flexible and powerful configurator. You can access the controls menu directly from the main menu, but I'm going to go into free flight. As you can see, I'm using the Beechcraft Bonanza G36. Then heading top right, I'm going to select the cog icon. This will take us to our settings menu. And from there, I'm selecting the controls tab. And we're now in the controls menu. The bindings used to configure your peripherals haven't really changed much from 2020, but the user interface has changed substantially. And with the lack of any instructions or guidance from the developers, it's very confusing at first. Not all changes are for the better, I must say, but in this video I'll do my best to explain everything for you to get you up and running. These type of videos by their very nature are somewhat boring to watch, conversely take a massive amount of time to create, but if you stick with me, by the end of the video you'll feel more comfortable with regards to setting up your peripherals. I've had multiple requests with regards to setting up things like the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, Turtle Beaches, Velocity 1, and of course I'll be doing configuration guides for these. But I do need to point out that various aspects of this configuration guide are broken. Some of these we'll touch on today. I'm hoping for a quick fix from Microsoft, then I can get my detailed step-by-step -step configuration guides out. So moving on, step one, let's get familiar with the interface and where everything is. The aircraft you're currently flying or configuring for is shown here, and you can change aircraft providing you haven't started a flight. Whilst flying you can still access the controls menu and make changes, but you can't change aircraft. Depending on what aircraft you have selected can alter what bindings are available, so if you're flying a small GA aircraft, some specific to say an airliner may not be available. Any peripherals that you have connected at the time, including mouse and keyboard, will be shown here. And to configure for a peripheral, make sure it is selected, indicated by a tick. Currently, keyboard is selected. Below the peripheral list are the three control categories, general controls, airplane controls, and specific controls. And this is where the confusion and to some degree the complexity of this configurator comes in. And in this video we'll be going into some depth to try and clarify things. At the top we have a search bar which is used to search by text. Here I've typed in auto. Any controls related to what I typed will be shown below. Clear the search bar here. In addition and very useful we have a search by input. I've just pressed C on the keyboard for example. Results shown only apply to the active peripheral. And everything beginning with C or has C in it is shown. Clear the entry in the same way. Bottom left we have our filters, and it has three settings. None, which means show all. Assigned is what's already configured. And essential are those that the developer considers, well, essential. One obvious point, but worth highlighting again as it's important. All filter results that you see only apply to the active input device. To change a device, simple process, just select it from the menu, and you're ready to start binding controls to the device. On the right hand side you have hardware settings. By selecting this, it takes you to the controls that will allow you to adjust sensitivities and other characteristics applicable to an axis and apply any dead zones etc. I mentioned a couple of things were broken. Currently there's no indication of the axis moving at all. This is currently the pitch axis. If I now change to the y axis, which is the roll function, once again no indication at all. And hopefully this will be fixed in the near future with a hot fix. You can, however, adjust the sensitivities, neutral position, dead zones, and the like. Not only do these visually display, but they do apply to the particular axes that you're adjusting in SIM. It's particularly important that you're able to see the center point or midpoint for your selected peripheral to check that the calibration is correct. This is a fairly basic requirement. I'm afraid to say indicative yet again that insufficient testing was done before the release of this product. Returning back to the main controls menu, in the center of course are all the different categories and within each category are the various bindings that you can attach to create your relevant profile. 
Each category contains a set of controls appropriate to that function. Under flight control surfaces, for example, we've got primary, secondary, and trim controls. Unless you know exactly what you're looking for, you're going to find it a lot easier to use the text search. This example, I'm typing in throttle, I'm on the keyboard profile, and it brings up everything related to the throttle, both those that are bound and unbound, because my filter is on none. Many of the keyboard commands in the new sim have changed compared to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Both general and airplane controls are set to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 by default, but can be changed to 2020. May be useful initially whilst you get used to the new key commands. Some changes have also been made to how the mouse works, particularly the middle mouse wheel. There's no version 2020 option. So it's worth taking a look and getting familiar with the new format. Now changing my active device to the alpha yoke and changing the filter from none to assigned. This yoke, by the way, does have a default configuration. I'm able to see all the bindings that are mapped to the various switches and axes. It's worthwhile noting at this stage that for any of the configurations, if we click on this cog here on the far right, it brings up a number of options specifically for that control. And here you'll find things such as set control on release. In this case, the action of the button is only on release, not on press. And also set invert axes, something you'll need for rudders or throttles or something of that nature to reverse the direction. And it's here you can delete any of the assignments if you want to. Staying with the Honeycomb Alpha for a moment, just as an example, if you take a look at any of the actions, whether they're configured or not, you'll see in the UI the category of the particular function. And you'll see here two different categories, those that are falling into the airplanes category and those that are falling into the general category. Now the category that a particular action falls into cannot be changed. And there are three overall categories, as we mentioned before, general controls, airplane controls, and specific controls. We'll have a look at the last one a little bit later. So the assignments go into the relevant category. So in the example on screen, for example, the elevator trim and rudder, etc. These are all used to manage and control the aircraft, thus airplane controls. If we take a look on screen at some of the examples that fall into the general category, None of these items have anything to do with actually flying the plane. They relate to such things as menu actions, tools, cameras, and so on. What a complete pain in the butt, right? Well, no, not really. The benefit of being able to configure by category and being able to alter the selected profile by category means, for example, if we wanted to configure for another aircraft, create a new profile, we could change the airplane controls, but leave the general controls intact. We wouldn't need to touch that, thus potentially saving us time. Let me demonstrate this with another example. I've now chosen my CLS60, my force feedback yoke. My filter is still on assigned. Here you can see I've assigned a lot of camera actions, etc. Falling in the general category. And of course for a yoke, my elevator and aileron axis. Falling in the airplane category. And I've renamed the profiles appropriately. I'm going to change my airplane controls to none, just leaving the camera intact, and they're gone. Only the camera controls are functional. I could now, for example, go and create another airplane configuration. Switch back to a configuration I created earlier, and the airplane controls are back. Quite difficult to explain, but I hope it makes sense. As I said, not intuitive, but quite powerful. Selecting the cog next to the category brings up a set of menus, allowing you to rename, delete, etc. profiles. Let's go ahead and duplicate the profile that we already have. I'm going to create a new profile, for example. I'm going to call it Single Throttle Prop and Mixture. You have the option to apply to all aircraft or set it as default, which I don't want to do in this instance. Select OK, and it's just created a duplicate of my previous config. Any user-created profiles, duplicates or not, can be modified. Let's do that just as an example. The profile affected by the change depends on the category of the action you're changing. Both my general and airplane controls are visible, filters on assigned. In this instance, I'm going to choose something that falls under the general category, which for the CLS60 is set to the profile camera. 
We could have selected an airplane control that would have changed the profile single TPM. For this function, you'll notice next to the configuration is the number 2. That number reflects that there are two other actions assigned to that same button, switch or axis or whatever the case may be. They may or may not conflict as you can use the same button in different modes, external camera, drone, cockpit and so on. But it can be quite useful for finding conflicts. So I'm going to click on the cog or tools icon. Here I get the option to delete the assignment. And usefully it also shows me the two other actions assigned to the same button. One is translate drone down. That's in showcase mode, so that's OK. And the other one is look down for the external camera. So I'm happy with that, no conflicts. I've selected delete. Job done, let's go back. And we can see here cockpit look down is gone. Hasn't asked me to rename because I'm still in the camera profile. Staying with this profile, let's now go back and add that same action to the same profile camera. The camera category is quite far down, so I'm going to just use the text box. Now I'm looking for look down. There it is, cockpit look down. Now click in the box to make it start scanning and press the button. It's my POV down. Note that number two has popped up again. Again, we can go to the cog or tools icon. Yep, it's exactly the same as before, exactly as we expected. No problems there. I'm happy with that. It's been added back. You can, of course, also search by input. Still with the CLS 60, I'm going to select search by input. It's scanning. I press the button, which again is my POV down. Also allocates a button, by the way. I'm happy with those. Job done. As mentioned earlier, if you haven't spawned into an airport, you can change your aircraft directly from the controls menu. I'm currently in the Bonanza 36, but uh, let me search for, let's go to a Boeing. I've chosen the 737 MAX. Here's an opportunity to give you an example of specific controls. In the search text box, if I type in TOGA, up come the options, but note they're defined as specific and will only display for aircraft that have that function. And in a profile will show under the specific controls category. For example, they're not visible using an Airbus, as Airbus doesn't have a TOGA function. I'm going to change aircraft again and go back to the Bonanza G36. There it is. Save and back to the controls menu. Staying once again with the CLS 60, I just want to quickly demonstrate that you can map more than one button, a combination of buttons, to an action. VR toolbar toggle, currently assigned to button 1. Press the box to make it scan. Now I'm going to press two buttons. Press one down, then the other, then release. Job done. The nice thing here, scan again, press the button, and the button assignment has changed. No need to delete the previous mapping. Now I'm going to change the active peripheral to the Verpal Ace rudder pedals. A good example where you may configure something once and not need to do it again. I've created a profile default rudder. It's the rudder axis plus the left and right brakes. And this will apply almost universally across most aircraft, so I can apply to all aircraft. If you have multiple profiles, you can set one as default. And in my experience, the rudder axis was a good example where you needed to invert the axis because at default, they operated in reverse. So for the purposes of clarity, each peripheral can be assigned controls as needed. And for each peripheral, those controls will fall into any one of the three categories. For the verbal rudders here, there's only an airplane profile. All I need is rudder and brakes, nothing else. Nothing specific and no general. For other peripherals, well, that may be different. Here's a practical example I've applied to the CLS 60. I've only needed to create one profile and a general for all the camera and so on. And as it's a force feedback yoke, I'm able to apply different parameters to it. And so I've been able to create different profiles for light GA, Airbus, and so on. I mentioned earlier there are a number of bugs within the configurator. There are a number of significant ones I think you should be aware of. Going back to the CLS 60, I'm going to stay on the profile I created, the uh, single TPM, filters on assigned. I'm now going to try and clear this profile. Note it's only the airplane controls, not the camera controls I've configured. So I'm now going to go ahead and select clear. It pops up with a message, are you sure? Yep, OK, clear that. And we can see the airplane controls have disappeared. I've saved and gone back, spawned into an airport, but they're not clear. This is a bug. 
Note clear is separate to delete. I was using clear as I was trying to create an empty profile. You can access the settings menu from the top toolbar by hitting the gamepad. Select the CLS 60 again. Make sure filter is on assigned. And despite clearing it, they're back again. So let's try that again. Single TPM profile, clear. Select OK. Airplane controls have disappeared. So we should be good to go. Back to the aircraft. And yes, they've gone. I don't have elevator and I don't have aileron. I haven't been able to get an empty profile to stick. The only way I've been able to do this is to make sure it has at least one entry. Overall, quite frustrating. So, once again, this is a bug and it needs to be sorted out. So what are my thoughts overall with regards to the new configurator? I get exactly what the developer was trying to do, and in principle will allow those wanting to create multiple complex profiles. However, the layout of the user interface, well, it needs some work and in my opinion is missing a number of key elements. For example, in terms of the filters, in addition to all, assigned, and so on, we also need filters for the various categories, general, airplane, and specific. So once again, I regret to say it's a great concept, but the implementation is marred, and I can't help get the feeling it's been a little bit rushed to market. I'm disappointed in the actual configurations that things such as prop feather, reverse thrust, etc., while the old limitations still prevail. But as they say, it is what it is. And I hope that this guide has been of some help to you and has helped your understanding of the new layout. If you found it useful, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Thank you all very much. Take care, look after yourself. See you again soon. And bye for now.